Hi again everyone, so this video we're going to look at cut work, so this is cut work for gold work, very specific to gold work embroidery technique. I'm going to show you what it looks like in on a piece. So this is my piece that I did on my apprenticeship, so this is my Egyptian triptych um, and the cut work is in the centre of the Eye of Horus here. So let's have a look at that a bit more closely. So this here is cut work, so this is metal, pieces of coiled metal um, sewn down over some padding. You can see here I've done it in different sections and there's different colours in there as well. And there's also a little bit down here which goes at a different angle. you notice this is slanted and this is straight. So a little bit down here, straight in different colours as well. So this is what we're going to have a go at. And we're going to have a go on this little sample here. Now I will say now that this is quite a technical um, technique for, um, for gold work. If you haven't had a go at cut work before, we do have another video on this. And um, you can see that here on our Golden Daisy project. It's a little bit simpler. So it's flat cut work um, and it's just a few pieces on the leaves. It's worth having a go at that first before you tackle this, um, just to give you an idea of the process involved. So we're going to have a go on here. So we've done some string padding. We've got another video on that um, if you haven't seen that as well. Um, so check that out first. So we're going to do the cut work over the string padding. And this string padding is raised up so it will give our cut work a nice um, curved look, a nice three dimensional look. So this is what it looks like over the padding. So here's the padding underneath. Here's the cut work on top. I've just worked a little bit here so you can see the two processes together. You can see how it looks over the padding. Now the materials that we're going to use are what's called check pearls. Got some here. These are available in our shop in lots of different colours um, and different finishes. So I'll show you the three that I'm going to use. So we've got um, a coloured wire check turquoise. So this is kind of a textured one um, that's non-shiny. We've got the shiny version, so this is a bright check pearl turquoise here. You can see how that one shines. And I'm going to put that, um, just to contrast, some gold. So this is a rough pearl gold. So this is a smooth finish, but it's non-shiny. So the rough indicates it's non-shiny. I'm going to use the three of those together to work this little bit of uh, sample here. So on this side here, we've used the rough gold in the middle, and I've put in a red wire check with that as well. So I'm going to use some different colours just so you can see how to put those together and what effects they make. So glasses on. So I'm using um, a similar colour thread to the string padding. So this is a Gutterman 488 thread and this matches the padding. So if you can see any of the stitches, um, you shouldn't be able to, but just in case you can, it will match and you won't see it. Um, I've doubled that over and I've run it through the beeswax. Um, beeswax is used on most threads for gold work embroidery, just helps to stick everything together a little bit and make everything a bit easier to work. So I've just put my knot out of the way. I'm going to do two small stitches. To secure the beginning of my thread. Now I'm bringing my needle up just slightly away from my padding. We'll see why that is in a minute. And I'm starting in the middle, so it's a nice, easy place to start. Um, and I'm going to put on, I'm going to do the turquoise wire check first. Now, it's um, no easy way to measure a length because you've got to go over the padding. So you're going to do a rough measurement first. If you just lay a piece of your check pearl on top, Bearing in mind it's got to go down the side over the top and down the other side. And if you notice I'm laying it at an angle, it's much easier to do cut work at an angle and get the edges smooth than it is to go straight across. The Egyptian piece had some straight across, but it's a bit trickier, so try it at an angle first. The angle is 45 degrees. If you're not sure what 45 degrees is, if you draw a square, it's corner to corner. So I'm going to cut one now very important is cut yourself another one 
before you use the first one. So if it's the right angle, if it's the right length, great. If not, we know if it's too long or too short. So always cut yourself a little second one. So you've got something to measure off. Otherwise you've got to measure every single pearl and that can take a long time. So I'm just going to thread the pearl on. It's hollow in the middle. It's a coil of wire. So I'm just going to thread it onto my needle and slide it to the bottom. Now make sure the pearl sits flat on the fabric. That's quite important. I'm just going to lay that over my padding and I've got my needle here. I'm going to run it along the thread and just push it down to the padding and that just helps me to see if it's the right length before I've sewn it down. So we want 45 degrees which is probably more like that. Now that's a tiny bit long, it's just moving a little bit, only a tiny bit. So it's easy to fix, so just slide it back to the top of my thread. Don't need to even take it off the needle, just push it to the end of the needle and you can snip a little bit off, like so. Thread it back on. And just check that length. Right, happy with that. It touches on both sides, touches that side and it touches that side. So when you're happy with the length, you can just take your needle down just slightly away again from the padding and that just allows for the width of that metal. Otherwise, if you take it right up to it, you can crush the metal. Now, this is a really good time to use a maloth. This is an embroidery laying tool, very specific to this embroidery technique, this goldwork technique. It just helps me to control that thread I can just pull it down tightly and it just hugs the padding really nice and tightly. You don't want to be able to get anything under there, neither do you want to be able to see the thread on this side and the thread on that side. Okay, so first piece in, great. Now this is where it gets a little bit technical, so I'm going to explain the technical aspect of you. If you don't understand it now, don't worry, it will come later, just follow what I'm doing. But it is worth explaining um, for those of you who've done a little bit and you're not too sure. So this is my padding here. Um, this is a piece of cut work. Now what you need to do is, depending on which way you go, depends on which side you come up and down. So if we're going to work down the piece of padding, which I'm going to do in this video, we're going to come up on the left side and go down on the right side. Just remember that and you don't need to understand the next bit, but if you can understand the next bit, that's great. So if you look at the angle that your cut work makes, that's this here with the line of your padding, which is going that way, this angle between the edge of the padding and the cut work is less than 45 degrees. This angle is more than 45 degrees and you want to put your needle into that smaller angle. It kind of makes like a V shape and your needle goes into that V shape. If you come up this side and come down here, your needle really hasn't got a shape to go into. So it needs to come up on the left and goes into that sharp angle. So every piece from now on will come up on the left, go down on the right, because there's the smaller of the angles that's less than 90 degrees. If we're going the other way, we're going upwards, then our small angle is now this side and our large angle is this side. So you'd come up on the right and go down on the left. What that does on the back is make a long stitch so you can always turn your piece over and see what's happening on the back. It's a little bit difficult to get your head around that um, but if you can learn that it will help you later on. If you can't, if that's too much for now, just come up on the side I come up and go down on the other side. So I'm going to work down so I'm going to come up on the left and go down on the right. Now I'm going to just put a little holding stitch in there because I came down on the left for my first piece. So I'm going to bring my needle up. I'll show you where and then explain why. So about there. So that looks like it's quite a long way away from that first piece. It's a little bit away from the edge of the padding as well to allow for the thickness of the gold. If I go too close to that, I end up squashing all my pieces together um, and it doesn't look good. So allow yourself enough space and that will come with experience. So I'm going to bring my needle up there. Now I cut myself another length when I cut the first one. I know that one's slightly too long, so I can cut the next one a bit shorter. So I'm going to cut, I think in this bright check. So I'm just going to cut it a tiny bit shorter. 
a good idea is to do this on a velvet board but because of the camera I'm just going to do it on here so you can see what I'm doing so hopefully I'll keep that one to the side because I know what length that is so hopefully this one this should be the same width all the way down if I've done it properly so hopefully um, this is the right length let's put it on and try it so again slide it to the bottom make sure it touches the fabric lean that over and just push up with my needle now that is actually a little bit too short that one so either my cutting isn't consistent my padding isn't consistent and there is a difference between some of these metals as well so I know that one's a little bit too short but that's fine we can use that later so I'm going to leave that there and I can cut one that's a bit longer I think about that much is fine That's the right one, that's the wrong one. It takes a little bit of practice to get these lengths right. I think that's probably the hardest part. And the more you do, the easier it becomes as well. So let's try that for size, that's perfect. So when I bring my needle along and I push it down into the padding, that touches on this side and it touches on the right hand side. So right length. So a little bit longer than that one that I've cut. Now, when I take my needle down, I'm going to just bring it away from the padding slightly, but I'm angling it now right underneath that previous stitch. Use my Melor to guide this down. These metals can damage if you're not careful, so just... And then we can just paddle in just to push that up. Perfect. Okay, let's just keep going. So up a little bit away. You can see how thick that metal is. If you come up too close there you're just going to squash the metal. So come up quite a bit away that far. Right let's try gold one. So we know it's got to be a bit longer. Now the gold is a quite a bit narrower so we'll see what happens with that. So I'm going to cut that a bit longer. Thread that one on, slide it to the bottom. Now the smooth and the rough pearls are much more delicate. So just, you can see how carefully I'm handling it. Right, if I push that in now, that's actually sticking up. So that's a little bit too long. So we just slide it back up the thread, up the needle. And we can just trim a bit off, slide it back on and try it again. Yeah, happy with that. So it's a very small amount in it, but it's worth taking the time to get it right. Pull it down very gently. You can just close up the gap with the Malor. I'm just going to work now all the way down the shape doing the same thing. Now this is the first piece I cut. so theory it should be a little bit too short but I'm just going to try it again because yeah that's okay so I'm guessing my padding isn't super duper accurate it doesn't need much just to just pull a stitch a little bit tighter than another one and it will change size so Now I'm going to cut, I think that one's going to be too small, so I'm going to cut another one of those. In theory, if you've got the same size all the way down, once you've cut one, you should be able to cut lots and just pick them up, but yeah, that's good needle goes in at an angle not right next to the padding just out a little bit and under that previous one the thread slides under the previous um, piece of pearl but as long as your pearls are right length your pearl won't go underneath so it kind of looks a bit odd thinking oh it's going to go underneath but it won't i will just sit next to it nice and smoothly When it goes in and it all works, it's 
the most satisfying thing in the world. When it doesn't, it's the most infuriating. So might find a bit of a love-hate relationship with this technique, but once you've got it, it's really lovely to do. So another gold one on. And then what's next? So we've got another wire check one. Piece here that should be slightly longer than that one, I think it is. Right, it's a little bit too short, so I'm going to cut a longer one to so just slide it back off. So I know that one's too short. So let's cut that one a bit longer. tiny bit too long now. Being really accurate with this, it's only going to take a couple of the coils off, but the more accurate you are, the better it's going to look. So that's better. Needle at an angle. Use the Malore to guide that thread down. Right, we're getting near to the bottom. So I want to show you how we deal with the end. So a bit longer than that one. It's a bit too short. It's better. Don't try and um, change the shape of your padding with it. Think, oh, I'll just straighten it up or I'll just make it a bit wider. Stick nice and closely to your padding and you'll get beautiful smooth cut work. Right, we're on the point now, so it's good to have two hands free for this technique as you can see, so if you can frame up your fabric in a frame that will help you. a good length. Right, so you're just going to follow the shape of your padding now. Don't need to do anything different other than the length of your chips. That one went in beautifully. So now I can't go down the side anymore because I'm at the corner, so I'm going to go across the bottom, but I'm still going to stick to the same angle. But now my pieces are going to get shorter because I'm not going from one side to the other, I'm going from the bottom. So now we can use those shorter pieces that didn't fit before. Let's try that one for size. That's pretty good. Yeah, like that. Now, what they can do when the padding's a bit high is they can fall off. So we need to make sure that one stays on with the next one. So a little bit closer for these because we want each one to push the next one. Uh, let's try this one for size. Okay, I think that's going to be a bit long, but I'll try it anyway. Yeah, that is too long. Now 
You can see how much wider your piece of stitching becomes when you put the purl over it. So you need to allow for that when you do your padding. Make sure your padding is narrower than you want your finished piece to be. Right, we're sort of going to remeasure now because everything's changed. I'm going to try that for the length. It's getting shorter, but it's also getting a bit flatter, so they will reduce quite quickly in size. Yeah, that one's too long. So you can see how <coughs> short they're going. And then just one more of the wire check turquoise just to stop that gold one falling off the end. Just a little shorty this one's going to be. So I'm going to guess this one, I think about a bit less than that even. Let's try that. Might be a bit too long. Yep, just a bit too long. That gold one's falling off, so I need this one to perfect. So you can see how carefully I've done that to make sure it all fits. Um, so yeah, right to the end, perfect point. Um, right, now if you want to go back the other way, you can do um, one of two things. You can either turn the frame around and do exactly the same as you've done, so you'll still be coming up on the left and going down on the right. Or if you want to work up from where you are, we're now going to swap over. So you'd now be up on the right and tuck your needle down into this sharp angle on the left and work your way up and finish this end exactly the same as that. So I'll work my way up there and I'll just do that end and then I'll show you what the finished thing looks like. So we're on the last few now. Um, what colour am I doing that colour? Exactly the same as for the other end. Do get into a rhythm, so I went up there quite quickly. Actually, it doesn't take long to get into your stride and work out how long your pieces should be, but it does take a bit of practice, so don't be disheartened if it's not perfect first go. It is a difficult technique to do. And then the last little bit on the end, way too long. Go. Last little bit of gold. I think that's the last one. I shall just. Yeah, I'm happy that is. There you go. You can just very carefully fiddle with it if you need to. It's very delicate. Try not to touch it if you don't have to touch it. If you want to finish that thread off now, um, I would turn my frame over and weave it under some stitches on the back because if you try and bring the needle up on the edge, you risk damaging, damaging your pearl. So that's cut work over 
soft string padding so if you like that um, and you've enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe to the channel click the bell for notifications of when we upload some more if you've got any questions you can ask that below um, i'm always here to help you and we've got loads of other gold work videos so don't forget to check those out as well see you next time